OK, we're going to have a brief look at using the edge detection filter in photo to generate masks and just take a look at a couple of use cases for doing so. So one such case might be with 3D renders or screenshots from real-time engines. You have some quite bad aliasing in the resulting image. So what we can do in this case is apply a blur filter but using the mask generated from the edge detection, we can just target the fine detailed edges. So to go about doing this, the first thing we want to do is duplicate our background image layer here. So to do this, we can go to Layer and Duplicate. Then with the duplicated layer selected, we can go to Filters, Detect, Detect Edges. OK, so this is with the edge detection filter. We can't do much with it in this state. So with this layer still selected, we'll go to Layer, Rasterize to Mask. And that will create a mask from that layer. So in order to actually apply this mask to the desired filter or adjustment, one such method might be to actually drag this mask layer into the filter or adjustment. But in this video, we'll take a slightly different approach. So if we head on down to the Channels panel here, we can see we've got Background Alpha, which is specific to this layer we have selected. All we need to do now is right-click Background Alpha and choose Create Spare Channel. OK, now if we scroll down, we will see our newly created channel, which is the mask information. So we'll just go ahead, right-click and rename this, just so we know what we're working with here. We'll just call it Edges. Click OK. So what that means now is that we can then just go ahead and get rid of this background mask layer. So I'll just click the Delete icon there. And if we notice in our Channels panel, we've still got the Edges channel saved at the bottom here. So let's actually go ahead and apply some sort of blur. So we'll do it as a live layer. We'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Gaussian Blur Filter. OK, and let's pick a particularly bad area of the image. We can see some aliasing around here. With the Live Gaussian Filter, we'll check Preserve Alpha and we'll drag the radius slider up to about one pixel. So if I just come out of that dialog and we have a look at the image as a whole, we've softened the entire image. Now then, to apply that mask we created earlier, we will dive into the Gaussian Blur filter, select it here, and then with our Edges channel, right-click it and choose Load to Gaussian Blur Alpha. OK, and probably zoomed out this far, we didn't see much of a difference. So let's zoom in. And then if I hide the Gaussian Blur filter, you can see the stair-stepping around the edge of the vase here and the apple. If I then show the filter, we'll see it's blurred those edges. Without blurring, the overall image. Again, if I just uncheck this, you'll see we're no longer blurring the entire image, just the most prominent edge detail. So that's all very well and good if you're into 3D rendering. If, however, you're into more traditional photography, let's take a look at something else we can do with this filter. So once again, we'll duplicate the background layer. And then again, we'll go to Filters, Detect, Detect Edges. And again, like before, we'll go to Layer, Rasterize to Mask. And again, we've got the background alpha channel here, which we want to use to create a spare channel. So we'll find the channel once again down here. Let's again rename it and call it Edges. 
OK, and then we can, of course, get rid of this background mask layer. OK, so let's say with this image, we want to thicken a lot of this rope detail. We want to kind of darken the areas or the edges. Let's use an unsharp mask filter. So we'll go into New Life Filter Layer, Unsharp Mask Filter. And we'll basically, and we can use the Unsharp Mask Filter with an incredibly high radius to add lots and lots of local contrast, which is similar to how the Clarity Filter functions. But again, we'll just close that dialog, go in and select the Unsharp Mask layer. We'll right click edges, load to unsharp mask alpha. Okay, and as a result, the effect becomes much more subtle. So I'll just show that layer again. And you can just see a sort of a subtle thickening of the edges. And this is a great way to make detail pop without making it seem too excessive or too obvious. Finally, to wrap this up then, let's try something a bit different. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that unsharp mask layer. Now you'll notice in between where we can see the sky detail, the sky is quite noisy. It's fine grain and it's only luminance noise, but let's say for argument's sake, we didn't want that, we wanted a smooth sky. So let's go ahead. I'm going to add a Gaussian blur filter. I'll check preserve alpha and we'll drag the radius up to just where we can see the sky detail starting to soften to a degree where we're not really seeing too much of that fine grain anymore. About one pixel should do. Okay, so now once again, I'll select the Gaussian Blur layer, right-click Edges, Load to Gaussian Blur Alpha. Now, at the moment, this will be blurring the edge detail, which doesn't include the sky. In fact, it's the opposite. So all we need to do with this is we've got our Gaussian Blur Alpha channel here. We can right-click it and select Invert. And there you see we'll now blur all of the detail in the image that's considered not sharp or not edge information. So in order for this effect not to be too overkill, we'll probably have to dive into the Gaussian Blur dialog again and just reduce the blurring slightly. But if we come out a bit and I'll hide that layer, Again, it's a very, very subtle effect, but if I just show that again, you'll see we can eliminate a lot of that fine-grained noise in the sky, simply by inverting that mask so that rather than targeting the edges, it's targeting the flat, indistinct detail. Okay, so I hope that's given you some ideas for using the edge detection filter and generating masks from it. We've also had a brief look at the channels panel and how you can save channels and load them into other layers channels like the alpha channel. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the Affinity forums and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.